So here we are in Cape Town and, and you want to know what makes me tick. Well, I'll tell you, what makes me move in the profession of architecture is exactly everything outside of architecture. We're interested in cinema, we're interested in economics, we're interested in social entrepreneurism, but we're trying to combine it with a method, with a clear method. That's why I guess I've gravitated now from Caracas to ETH, where I can get all the help I need to kind of make a scientific approach to what we call a toolbox, an urban toolbox. Why an urban toolbox? Because well, there's too much wasted uh, projects that are all custom made in this world. So maybe we can create a kit of parts like the vertical gymnasium, like our music school, maybe the cable car and its hubs and its stations. Um, and maybe the stair systems that we've developed, a dry toilet, which is a very micro project that could be repeated. But how can this toolbox conform itself and plug everything in into one coherent system or ecology, right? And it's not an it's not the old concept of a of a system, you know, because you coming from semiotics, Valentina, I know very well that uh, that this old idea of of system thinking. I believe we can no longer understand the total, right? The total uh, 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 idea of architecture and urbanism. Cities have gotten too big, too large, the megalopolis, that they're out of control. Even Caracas, six million is out of control. So you don't need to be the 11 million of Sao Paulo, of inner Sao Paulo or the greater Sao Paulo, 19 million. So in that sense, if we can no longer comprehend the whole in our lives, in philosophy, in anything, so maybe we have to just look at the fragments. So only by looking at kind of fragmentary urbanisms, if you want, uh, micro-urbanisms, if you want, then maybe we can approach architecture uh, that way. Now, of course, these fragments can compose some kind of constellation or some kind of cloud system, or some kind of cosmos that makes a reading, let's say, in an area. In this sense, uh, um, we Stefano's project now in Sao Paulo, which we were there and, and we saw the Sao Francisco event, the idea that he could create a constellation of cities speaking to cities is very interesting. And how it's the question at the end is how does the local become global and the global local? How do we have that dialogue going? How do we import export? How do we have this dialogue east, west, north, south? So the the real question then is to look at very specific things. So look at very specific sites and very specific people and very specific needs. You, so from the specific we can go to the general but we cannot go from the general to the specific, right? We go from the specific to the general, right? And this is the, really the interesting thing. So how can someone ask, how can our projects and our ideas be actually now uh, go uh, around the globe in our project called Gran Horizonte, which is kind of a cinema project. In the beginning of our career as Urban Think Tank, we started New York Caracas. Uh, uh, cordon. But this is as boring as just a cable car going in a straight line. And now the whole constellation of our travels of what I call uh, 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 two-step blacktop, or, you know, which is the, the road movie or, um, from the 70s, is our road movie now has taken us to Amman, has taken us to uh, North Africa, has taken us to uh, Kenya, Kibera, has taken us to Sao Paulo, Rio, um, has taken us down to, to Villa 31 in Buenos Aires, to Peru, Previ, etc. has taken us around the world and what we're trying to do is document this in a film of specific stories, specific examples of how the role of the architect is changing and how we can cross boundaries now and how we can actually activate sites of, of, of common uh, interest, political common interest, but we can activate them maybe from sites elsewhere. So it's the old idea that Saskia Sassen talks about, about this tar territory authority and rights before it was a national territory or maybe it was, you know, uh, um, but now we're breaking these national boundaries. And this is what's interesting to me, is how I've now moved from Caracas via New York, Zurich, and now the world seems more at my reach. Of course, this is a figment of my imagination. Again, I will only capture fragments. 
of the world, right? And the incre incredible thing that keeps Hubert and me uh, uh, stimulated with Urban Think Tank is precisely that we work in a collective constellation. So we find people on the ground, what we call our local actors, and we somehow connect them back into our hub, which is now Zurich, right? With 10 assistants, our own building, and in this hub, the information is rolling in from all the sites. So we're uncovering things in Amman that are unbelievable. An old, uh, uh, um, beautiful site called Recife, just outside of Amman, has become the most devastated ecological suicide because this is where the English started to dig for radon. Radon, which is for agriculture, no? Um, which is phosphorus, phosphate, no? And it, the tunnels they dug and abandoned are now filling up with water. And, for, and that water is turning into gas, radon gas. And that gas is seeping through the ground on, through and into a refugee camp of Palestinians who have been there for 40 years, who have built a city that is, you know, a huge city of 300,000 people. We don't even know how big the city is. No one's uh, accounted for it. And we're doing mappings of what's going on here in this area of Recife precisely as a tool to be, to be used as an urban design, ultimately, to urban design uh, uh, project. But they have obviously Politi political consequences. So what we need to do as architects is to visualize information as you saw today. You know, mapping is critical mapping. Precisely, it's action mapping. And you know very well, maybe Sizek and Sloterdijk um, have talked about the idea that of course we're utopian. Utopia is not over, but it's not utopia of, let's say, the 1960s of unrealizable dreams. No, it's the utopia is in acting. We can act out utopia on the ground now. Our ideas of constructing a kind of new society and new social network is, can be acted out. And so I say we'll never lose our utopian dreams as an architect.